Hello and welcome to another episode of Chino and the Hills. Today I'm happy to sit down here virtually with Veronica Kemble. Uh, many of you may know her, very involved in the community outreach. Um, to start off, I just want to say to everybody out there, uh, just wish you well, wish you health, safety, hope you're staying home as much as possible, uh, and, and ultimately just, you know, we'll get through this together and uh, hopefully hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, so I wanted to just kind of jump on here again virtually to, um, you know, bring some entertainment as a lot of us are staying home and, uh, you know, might have some some lights to, to, to bring to us. So um, with that being said, uh, I'll get into my first question for Veronica. Um, so introduce yourself. Who are you? Um, where'd you grow up? Your origin story kind of uh, and how you ended up in, in the, the Chino, Chino Hills area. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I was born in Los Angeles and uh, moved to West Covina, where I was there till probably about 2007. Then I met my husband, who was in construction, um, around 2007. We got engaged, got married, and then it was a toss-up between, do we move into my house in West Covina or his home in Chino Hills? Well, his house in Chino Hills was a little bit larger than mine, so I ended up moving here. Um, and I think that I was kind of like shock, sticker shock, because where I came from, there were no cows, <laughs> there was no goats. Yeah. And here in Chino Hills, I call it, I was born now and raised in farm country. Um, and I, I just got to tell you a quick joke, or not a joke, but a story real quick. It was very, I was very new to Chino Hills and I came home from work one day and as I'm pulling in my driveway, all my neighbors are out on the front and they're pointing at the front of my house and here's this goat <laughs> eating my flowers. And I'm looking at these neighbors going, what the, who, whose goat is this? You know? And one of the neighbors came over and got his belt and took the goat away and my husband just looked at me and said, welcome to Chino Hills, honey, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and um, then I just, you know, started working um, with my husband. We own a construction company. Okay. And uh, started working with my husband and we did some residential locally and then moved into commercial sites. And on some of my free time, I was kind of bored and decided, what am I going to do? You know, I, I wasn't used to helping communities. I wasn't used to the homeless. I mean, this was a whole new world for me. Now, before we get there, let's go back a little bit because I think that, I think our origin story and kind of the way we're grow, grown up uh, has an impact on kind of where our future life takes us. So now did you, were you an only child? Do you have multiple siblings? Kind of, how was your, how was your early life? I was uh, one of four, but okay. they were older than me. So they already grew up and left home. And I was a single child, oh, wow. very spoiled when I was small. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, and lived in West Covina. And um, my father was uh, working for Boeing at the time. And okay. my mother was uh, head of the uh, one of the hospitals in Los Angeles in uh, nutrition. Okay. So I was home a lot and by myself and seriously, just very spoiled and <laughs> didn't know anything about the outside world. Um, until I came to Chino Hills. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. So uh, like I said, we, we kind of alluded to it a little bit, but tell me how your involvement in the city, obviously, um, you know, like I said, you, you own a, you and your husband own a construction company, but um, what, what other involvements uh, do you have in, in the community? Well, back in 2012, my husband uh, was involved with a men's group. We go to Inland Hills Church here in okay. Chino. And he woke up one morning and said, honey, where's the crock pot? And I said, what are you going to do with the crock pot? He says, I'm going to make spaghetti and feed the homeless. And I kind of chuckled because I thought, he doesn't know how to cook. I'm going to make the spaghetti and you're yeah, going to feed yeah, the homeless. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to go with you. And he said, no, 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 this is a man's thing. Yeah. I said, well, that's great. I'm going to go with you. <laughs> so I went with him to the church. It was a little church in Pomona called Pomona Valley Christian Church. And I discovered that they feed the homeless every Saturday. Um, so here's all these men in the kitchen and I'm directing them, chopping onions, do the tomatoes. And, and it was such a joy, but this was my first encounter with the homeless. So sure. I was really sticker shop. Yeah. Um, this elderly woman came up to my husband and she said, is this your wife? And he said, yes. 
she says, may I speak to her? So I go outside and there's this little old lady with a cane. Um, and she said to me, can you give me a ride home? And I looked at her and I said, oh, okay, where do you live? And she says, well, the bishop usually at the church gives me a ride home after lunch, but he's left for the day. Now, mind you, this woman is covered from head to toe with filth and everything else. Sure. So I pick her up and I put her in the truck and my husband looks at me like, what, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> you know? And I said, honey, we're going to give her a ride home. He's like, okay. So here we are driving down Gary, driving down Holt and ended up to this alley area where was where she had lived and she lived in this cardboard box mm -hmm. now my heart went out to this woman when we dropped her off and i was just totally just upset and crying and everything and i came back home and i didn't know what to do and i called my pastor at the church and i said you know i found this woman and she's she could be my mother and I said, I just want to give her $30,000 and get her off the street. And he says, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, you don't know anything about her. Yeah. You don't know where she's from, if she's on drugs or anything like this. He goes, don't give money out. He goes, why don't you go back and find her and try to find out the needs of this woman? And I thought, okay, I'll do that. So the next day or two, I got in my car and I drove back to Pomona and I found her. And I sat her down and had a conversation with her. And I said, you know, what is your name? And her name was Mary. And uh, I said, okay. I said, Mary, I said, if I were to give you something and you had a need for it, what is it that you would like to have? And she sat there for a second and she looked at me and she said, socks. And I said, socks? She said, yeah, clean socks. She says, I walk so much on my feet. She says, I'm, I only have one pair of socks and they're dirty all the time. And she was telling me how she washes them. And I thought, okay. And I thought, well, do you have sores on your feet from all the walking? Yes. So with that, I came back home and I really thought hard and I thought, okay, what are the basic necessities I can give to this woman that don't cost a lot of money? Sure, so I sure. went to the Dollar Tree or the 99 cent store locally here in Chino Hills. And I bought a pair of socks toothbrush, toothbrush holder, toothpaste, and neosporum for the mm -hmm. sores on her sock. Yeah. I put it in a baggie. I went back, I found her, and I gave it to her. And the first thing she did was pull the socks out of the baggie. And she was smelling them. She held them up to her face. And of course, I'm in tears because yeah. I'm thinking, we, we're, we're so blessed, right? And here's yeah. this woman, all she wanted was socks. So this went on and... Um, I thought, you know, there's got to be more people out there that want the same things as I've given her. So I went back home and I thought about it and put a few baggies together. Now, this was right before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And this little church feeds the homeless every year at Thanksgiving. They raise the turkeys and they cook the turkeys in that church and they feed, you know, put meals together. So I went and talked to the bishop and I said, do you mind? I said, I put together 20 baggies. I thought it was a big deal, right? Yeah. 20 baggies. And I said, uh, I'd like to give these out to some of the homeless people when you feed them. He said, sure, no problem. So my son and I took the baggies and we pull up to the church. And here, this line is around the church of all these homeless people. Yeah. And it didn't dawn on me. I didn't have enough baggies until I get my baggies and I start to give everybody a baggie. And everybody's so excited with the hygiene products. My 20th baggie, I looked at the 21st person and I felt so bad. I gave my son money and I said, go to the store and buy more <laughs> stuff because we have to give these people something. We need a hundred more baggies. So, yeah. So we did what we could. The following year, I thought, you know what? This was such a great thing. And I, and I really felt that I really helped some people that I put it on Facebook. And that's when I met, I actually had a fundraiser at the house. And I had some of the local people that sold things in the community, candles and clothing and stuff, and got together with them and said, look, can you bring your products to my house? We're going to have a fundraiser. I'll feed you, but you guys sell your products. We'll invite the community to my home and all the items that they buy from you. I said, I'd like 50% donated and we would put more baggies together. Yeah. So we did. And that's the first time I met Denise Barr. She go. came to my home 
and she introduced herself and she said, Veronica, she goes, I think this is such a great cause. She goes, we should put it on Facebook. And I was like, uh, what's Facebook? You know, I was just <laughs> learning about it. And she introduced me to her site, which is Chino Hills Connection. And she said, the community here will probably help you. I said, okay, great. So we went on Chino Hills Connection and put on there that, you know, we wanted people to donate some baggies for hygiene. And the next thing I know, these baggies started to come in. Okay, great. So the fundraiser went well. And then I went back to the church the following year, and I had, I think it was close to 100 baggies. Okay. I was really proud that we raised 100 baggies. Yeah. But now the church needed more help. And they said, you did so well with raising these baggies. Can you help us with turkeys? I said, turkeys? And he said, yeah, because we need turkeys to feed the homeless. Sure. Okay. So I go back on Facebook, Chino Hills Connection, and I put on there if we could have donations of turkeys from the community. This community is so amazing. They came forward and the next thing I know, I've got people dropping off turkeys on my front yard in bags, just in cars. And I was really overwhelmed. And then when I tell the pastor at the church and he says, great, he says, but you need to cook them. I says, cook them? <laughs> Where's the crock pot? Yeah, yeah, you're talking a hundred turkeys here. And he said, well, he says, you know, you, you cook them and debone them and put them in the baggies, stick them in the freezer, bring them to the church, and we warm them up the morning up. Okay, now I needed help. I have a double oven, my husband and I, four turkeys at a time. Uh -huh. We cooked around the clock for two weeks, and I, and I bought those pans that you put the turkeys in, the baggies, instructions. In the front of my house, there's a, a walkway. And it goes down like this and it goes out. And we had turkeys lined up and women and men were coming and they'd grab a, ba a bag of turkey and they'd take it to their home. And it was amazing. Very cool. We ended up with hundreds of turkeys that year. Okay, fast forward, you know, still helping with the community, still doing with the turkeys and the baggies. The baggies are taking off and people are coming forward, knocking on my door. Are you still doing the hygiene? Yes, I am. And we started doing it strictly at Thanksgiving. Then around probably, I want to say, around 2014, the organization, the Seroptimist Club here in Chino, sure. um, came forward. And I didn't even know they existed. It's a wonderful organization. They recognize women in the community helping other women and, and girls. And they have a great so, brew and chew that unfortunately had to get had canceled, to be canceled this year. Though. This year, yes. So I was nominated for the Ruby Award. Was very honored that I received it. Um, I also got certificates from the mayor of Chino Hills, and you know the U.S. House of Representatives came to this dinner for me. It was great. I loved it. But it wasn't about me. It was about the community again. And I, sure. I definitely wanted to let everybody know that the community was the one doing this, not me. They were the ones helping. So the following year, here we go, um, people were starting to come forward and there was this little boy by the name of Vincent Dominguez. He's very well known in the community. He had cancer <clears throat> and he came to me while well, he was having treatment down at the Ronald McDonald house mm -hmm. and said, Veronica, he says, I need your help. And I said, well, what can I do for you, Vincent? He says, the hospital here does not have food to feed the parents. And I said, what? That's unusual. This is a huge house. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they have facilities for the parents to stay there. But as far as the food, it's only for donations. Beautiful kitchen and freezers and refrigerator. I thought, okay, here we go again. Facebook, <laughs> Chino Hills Connection. Right? There you go. I put it out there and within 24 hours, my whole living room was packed with groceries from people from the community coming forward to help this little boy feed other parents or his parents and other parents in that hospital it was great i absolutely loved it so then we went forward with with helping people that needed assistance we helped a young man down the street who actually unfortunately died of cancer but before he died one of his wishes was he wanted a stuffed animal so i put on facebook i want to put a smile on this little boy's face and the community came forward again and bought bread. They brought a hundred stuffed animals. For this <laughs> now you can see me 
carrying bags of stuffed animals to get into this this facility. Yeah. Hospital wasn't going to let me in because the stuffed animals were not clean. You know, it's right. like it had to be cleaned in this environment type of a thing. So sure. we took the the stuffed animals back to his house. He was able to come home right before he passed. So he did enjoy the stuffed animals. And I thank the community for helping so much in giving. Very cool. <laughs> now, That's... oh no, I was just gonna say along yeah. with that, we've had people from the community just give in so many different ways. You know, the teachers in the community were pulling money out of their pocket to pay for school supplies for children. Um, again, I put it on Facebook now this time Diamond Bar came forward, Chino Hills came forward, and there were printers and ink and paper and pencils that we were able to give back to the teachers so they wouldn't pull the money out of their pocket. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Well, this is probably an obvious question, the next one, but uh, what, what is it that you like best about the Chino Hills community? I think that's a pro pretty obvious question, but maybe you'll throw me for a loop. Well, Here's the thing. It, it surprises me that there are so many people wanting to give, but not that many leaders. People are afraid hmm. to say, yeah, I can do that. I'll, 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 I'll start my own Facebook or I'll start my own, you know, whatever to help. It's, they are wonderful in giving, but I think they think that they're just going to be overwhelmed hmm. with you know, starting starting something on their own to help. Don't get me wrong, there have been women in the community that have done it and done a very good job. Mm. But when you ask for help, the community comes forward, the men, the children, the students. I've had Ayala High School, I've had Rolling Ridge Elementary, the kids there were amazing contacting me wanting to get baggies for Bag It For Mary's Way. And Bag It For Mary's Way is a, um, a site that I created for Mary um, you know, so that people can contact me and see the donations that we get in and where they go to. Yeah. So is that a <laughs> continuous thing? Is that more uh, seasonal or, and also it's where? Not, yeah. Go ahead. It's not seasonal anymore. Okay. It was, okay. and now it's all year round. And where's um, the best place to contact or make donations or anything well, like that? They can contact me at bag it for Mary's way at yahoo.com if okay, they that's... want to email me. Okay. Or they can call me on my phone at 626 617 I think everybody basically knows me as the bag lady <laughs> or the turkey lady <laughs> for giving, you know, help to the community. Yeah. And uh, we get a lot of people that want to help. So the bags are, are uh, all year long, and then the turkeys are obviously more seasonal towards right, Thanksgiving. And right. when do you start collecting for those? The turkeys or the yeah, bags? Yeah, the turkeys. Um, usually the turkeys come out in the stores two weeks before Thanksgiving. Sure. And so once they come out, I start to post the sales of the different stores so mm. that if people can uh, grab a turkey, you know, and grab another one and an extra. And... In 2017, while I was asking for turkeys, um, I met this gentleman online. His name is Robin Sun, very nice man, and his wife, Maylene, who said to me, Veronica, I hear you're having a little problem getting a lot of turkeys. I want to help you. I said, okay, Robin, uh, what can you do for me? You know, and he says, I'm going to have a party at my house, and I'm going to feed everybody, and everybody's going to have a great time, but everybody that comes has to bring a turkey. <laughs> now, I'm thinking that's kind of odd, but okay. Yeah. You know? Now, this is right around Thanksgiving. I am in the midst of putting baggies together and cooking, and I started to get a little sick, meaning I was just getting drained from putting all the hours in to mm. do everything. Yeah. And so two days before, no, I think it was like the day before Thanksgiving, Robinson had, had called me and said, okay, you know, the party's today and, you know, you're, you're coming, right? And I said, Robin, I don't feel well. And he says, no, 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 this is for you. You have to come to this party. Yeah. I thought, okay. So we went, my husband and I went to his house. And as we get out of the car, there's this camera crew and interviewing Robin and Robin's pointing to me. They turn the camera around and they come towards me and they're like, are you Veronica Kimball? And I said, uh, yes. Uh, 
yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, how can I help you? And they said, we want to do a story on you. We heard what you do for the homeless, he said, and uh, we'd like to do a story. This was Adrian of Zoss Studios out of Almani. Wonderful, wonderful young man. I said, okay, so they followed me around the house and everything and, you know, tried to do some film to put together. But unfortunately, we couldn't use that film because we really weren't thinking that this is filming Robin's house. Mm. And we didn't want everybody to know, sure. you know, where Robin lived, of course. So the next day, the Zaw Studios came to my home and they took a drone and followed me and watched me load up my car with the baggies, go to this little church in Pomona. <laughs> and they followed me for hours, taping me. Um, and I was talking basically about Baggett from Mary's Way, how I started it, and feeding the homeless. And this gentleman put this wonderful video together. Fun. People can see it. If, yeah. they, if they come on Facebook and look for Baggett from Mary's Way, they can see the video that Zaw Studios had put together for Very me. nice. Very nice. Well, speaking of all these turkeys, it's making me kind of hungry. And um, w that brings me to my next question. What is your favorite restaurant in Chino or Chino Hills? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I, and say, I don't think one person has narrowed it down to one restaurant yet. They're, they initially have one, but they'll, they'll talk about others. So feel free to name drop a few. Well, um, let's see. I, I, I'm Mexican, so I definitely go towards the Mexican food here. Okay. And um, I think Los Conciles, Conciles, Consat, Conciles, Conciles Los Con see, it begins with a say. Yeah. It's right over here in Cheney Hills Parkway. Yeah, Las Consuelas, I believe, right? That's it. Yeah. Yes. And they have wonderful enchiladas. I absolutely love their enchiladas. Now, for um, pizza, they're right across in the same center. There's a pizza place in there. Um, I believe it's called Stonewoods. Yeah, yeah. Wood Woodstone, I believe. Woodstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Their sauce there is amazing <laughs> for their pizzas. The salad, they give you this huge salad with this, like a pita bread that they make fresh yeah, for yeah. you. <laughs> Big <Absolutely>. bubbled up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And, um, and there are a lot of wonderful things. I think for pastries, I like the bun cakes. Mm, yeah. Those little bun cakes that are made over here. Yep. Um, and again, it's just a lot of the restaurants in here are absolutely amazing. Yeah, I know it's hard to zero in on uh, in on one. It's a it's an yeah. unfair question. <laughs> uh, ne next question: uh, What if you had the ability to put a, a billboard in the middle of the seventy one freeway, right right between Chino and Chino Hills? What would it say, and why? Bag it for Mary's way, and why people would look it up and try to figure out what it's all about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because Bag It for Mary's Way does more than just giving the baggies. It brings the community together. Sure. And um, I think that we've done so much for the community and other communities. Um, it's nice to see children get involved. I have the Girl Scouts every year come to help put the baggies together in my home. I'll bake cookies for them while they're stuffing the baggies in my living room. Nice. And nice. I think that's that's what I would put up on the billboard. Yes. Yeah. Just to raise ways, raise that awareness. Perfect. Yes. Um, you know, obviously we're we're doing this interview via Zoom and not in person like we traditionally do um, with with the stay in place order going. How is that going for you? And have you picked up any hobbies or? Um, worked on any projects uh, while you've been at home? Well, uh, cooking. <laughs> I love to cook. Yeah. So I'm always asking my Chino Hills Connection uh, neighbors what they've made today with what they have in their cupboards. Yeah. And I love the idea that we can share. Like yeah. if somebody needs flour or something and we sure. say, oh, we've got this, that we can share that. Yeah. Um, of course, not face to face. We'll drop it off on the doorstep. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's cooking and oh. of course, you know, just uh, chit-chatting on Chino Hills Connection and just yeah. getting to know other people as yeah. well. Staying connected but, without being yes. physically connected. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Exactly. It's like an episode of Chopped every now and then when you get low on groceries, it's like, okay, what can I make with Skittles, uh, chicken yes. breast? And yes. uh, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, tell me this, what is the best advice you were ever given? Hmm. <sighs> To follow God. Okay. To follow God. And I think is, because I have that he has blessed me to 
immensely and my family. Good for you. And you've done the same to others, which is great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, any, any other projects? I'm sorry. <laughs> didn't mean to <laughs> bring you to okay. tears <laughs> on this one, but um, yeah, is there anything else that, uh, that we should have talked about that, that we didn't? Well, I just wanted to let you know that it's not only the small children, but the high school children as well have come around and contacted me. Ayala High School, some of the girls over there um, put a lot of socks together, got a lot of socks and brought me hundreds of pairs of socks to put into the baggies. And it's just wonderful to see that. Um, we have now given some of the baggies to a House of Ruth in Pomona, which is a great organization for battered women and children. Mm. And I discovered that um, organization and um, try to help them out as much as I can. Uh, there's a lot of great organizations everywhere. If people would just Google it and find out, I'm always being contacted of people wanting to know where they can help, where they can go, yeah. where they can bring their children to, to help them learn how to give. Lots of options. And I think your message is clear. So we, we definitely yes. appreciate that. Uh, bonus question. Um, I'm always looking for, for new people to, to interview on here. So is there anybody in the city of Chino or Chino Hills that you would recommend um, that, I, that I interview? And uh, can you make that connection for me? Ah, yes. Um, I personally think that the Boys Republic, there's a woman who helped me with the turkeys. Her name is Evelyn, who works for the Boys Republic. Okay. And the Boys Republic have done quite a bit for the city. I've watched these boys work from you know, milking the cows in the fields to now a culinary school yeah. in the Boys Republic, which is amazing. And I can certainly uh, introduce you to Evelyn, and I'm sure she could uh, bring some of the chefs online to uh, talk mm -hmm. about the school and what the boys do there. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Appreciate that. Well, that's all the questions I have for today. I appreciate your time very much and, and sharing your um, your time today and sharing Thank your time you. every year um, with, with all these, um, you know, philanthropies that you've done and uh, appreciate that again. Um, thanks. Stay safe. Thank stay you. healthy. You stay, stay inside, stay home. And yeah. um, we'll see you guys another time. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.